everybody welcome back to my channel so today I'm doing a requested video which is a rundown of leather fragrances fragrances with the um, fragrance note leather if you're new here then welcome to my channel it's all about perfume so if you're a perfume fan like me do subscribe I have new perfume videos every week and leave your request for couple videos down below in the comments so this video is going to cover perfumes that are really really leathery um, and then other ones that have leather in that add to the fragrance but it's not the most dominant note so a bit of a range and of course there are loads of other ones that I won't cover message down below in the comments any other leather perfumes that I don't mention I'm sure this is not an exhaustive list as always the links will be down below to where you can buy these all around the world. So in terms of the use of leather and perfume, so leather as a fragrance note is I guess a really old, um, has been around for a long time, um, of course the sort of wealthy aristocracy would wear leather gloves and it would come with that leather smell and um, leather gloves were often perfumed with different oils because um, the sort of raw smell um, through the tanning process of the leather didn't smell great so they would put oils in to make it smell different. And the first official documented leather scent was worn by King George III and it was Creed's Royal English Leather which is still available today. Often you'll see uh, Russia named in some leather scents and that's because um, the Russian army wore a lot of leather back in the day and the smell was associated with, you know, success, virtue of the military representing the country. It's quite a characteristic smell so it came associated with them and um, was then used in perfumery. It's sometimes called an animalistic scent because it kind of is, I mean leather of course is a um, the skin of an animal so it is animalistic but often um, in fragrances it's synthetic man-made scent, it's not actually from an animal. Um, lots of scents are vegan these days. So let us get into the perfumes. So first on my list is Valentino's Donna Noir Absolute. This is the black one in the Valentino Donna range. I have done a video all about this range which I'll leave linked. Um, but this black one is probably the heaviest in the whole range and leather is the dominant note for me in this fragrance. It also has a plum liqueur sense to it, so kind of like a boozy leather. So overall it kind of comes across as nighttime, intense, um, sexy, mysterious. Leather is quite a sexy scent, I think. Um, and then that booziness, that boozy plum liqueur, um, again, makes this feel like nighttime. Like this would be a really nice perfume to wear out um, to a cocktail bar or something. It would smell really interesting when people are up close to you. And quite different to the other ones in the Valentina range, Valentina range, which are quite, um, a bit more light and floral. So this is a really nice um, sexy use of leather. Valentino also use leather in their Valentina Mer Assoluto. Um, so this is the gray one in the Valentina range. I've also done a range video, which I'll leave linked down below for the Valentina perfumes. Um, this one, I don't really find the leather to be the dominant note. It's just one of the dominant notes because it also has vanilla and myrrh in it. So this is a little bit more spicy Arabic sweet vanilla with the leather thrown in. So sort of think, um, sort of traveling on a horse with the smell of leather but also you're carrying myrrh and you've got vanilla so um, still quite sort of Arabian exotic smell um, and a little bit more complicated than the Valentino Noir Absolute. Probably one of the most famous leather perfumes is the Chanel Coeur de Rossi. I'm probably not pronouncing that French right, I'm so sorry. So this here you see the um, nod towards Russia. Um, this isn't sold in every Chanel boutique, I think, but you can order it online. And it's quite a strong, woody leather. It's been around for quite a while, um, almost 100 years actually. It came out in 1924. I'm sure they will have reformulated it over the years. And this was made out of the actual Mademoiselle Chanel um, meeting someone in Russia and creating this perfume, I think, for them or with them um, back in the 20s. So it's very original Russian-inspired leather perfume. Very interesting, quite strong, quite heavy, good quality as you'd expect. And 
the fact that it's been around for nearly a hundred years, I guess, is testament to the um, classiness and the longevity and the quality of this perfume. Another Chanel that uses leather is Chanel number no. 19, which is their sort of mossy green fragrance, but they have put a bit of leather in, but it's by no means the dominant note. It's sort of one of the ones mixed in with it. If you're looking for a pure leather perfume that has basically no other ingredients, um, the Ellie Saab Queer Absolu is basically just leather like if you just want to smell like leather no other notes in then this is a very simple clean leather smell um i think this is a unisex perfume and you can often get the ones in this ellie saab exclusive range reduced um i'll find you it at good price in the links down below um for whatever reason they always seem to be on sale so they're usually like way over 100 pounds but you can get them for like 40 or something um so really good quality, stronger than your Elie Saab Le Parfum range, heavier, a um, bit more exclusive, but yeah, this is just a simple clean leather. A relatively well-known leather perfume is Kelly Kalesh from Hermes, and this is a really lovely mix between leather and rose. I would often recommend this perfume when people wanted something feminine, but something strong with a lot of presence and nothing like airy fairy, nothing sweet or like super flowery. Um, so this is like a rose leather, so feminine, um, but still got that serious leatherness to it. It's a bit of a sort of boss girl perfume. Um, it's taking itself, I guess, quite seriously, but you know, if you're going, if you want to sort of power dress or you're going to an important meeting then this could be quite a cool perfume to wear you won't want to mess with someone that smells of Kelly Kalesh and of course Hermes is such an amazing perfumer they have such high quality long lasting perfumes so this is a sort of probably one of the most modern um, leather perfumes out there a famous leather perfume is of course Tom Ford's Tuscan leather this has a whole bunch of different notes in with it, like floral scents, it even has raspberry in. Um, but after it's settled on the skin, the leather, you know, after an hour or so, the leather is really coming through and is the dominant note. After a lot of those light initial notes come through, which are an unusual combination to put with leather, in my opinion. As always, the Tom Ford perfumes are quite expensive um, and aren't really often discounted. Um, but this is probably like well known. We've probably all smelt this in at the Tom Ford counter in um you know department stores and it is quite sexy with a suede leatheriness to it quite sensual quite winter and definitely want to try if you're interested in leather perfumes a unisex leather perfume is Bulgari's black now this is quite heavy, it and it is very unisex. You could easily think that this was just for men, but it is actually unisex. So it has lots of woody notes in with the leather. It has a little bit of fresh citrus when you first spray it, but it also has vanilla and amber, which add a little bit of dark sweetness to this, like a dark sugar sweetness. So overall, it is unisex, but it's not for someone who wants some, to smell particularly girly or feminine. Another modern take on leather is by Killian. I actually have this fragrance on order and it hasn't arrived yet for this video, sorry. This is Madly In Love and from their new range which came out about a year ago which I really love. This is leather with a bit of raspberry in that, that fades relatively quickly but it makes this a bit more modern but it also has a sort of tobacco note in this as well so it becomes a smoky leather so very sexy sensual um, you're getting those nighttime interesting sort of Parisian street vibe from this the bottles of course very unusual they all in this range are look the same but have different names um, so if you're looking for something a bit sexy a bit unusual then I would always recommend the clean ones I really like them another sort of smoky one is Jo Malone's bronze wood leather so along with the leather fragrance note which is the dominant note you get a um, woody cedar mossy smokiness kind of like if someone had set a cedar tree on fire comes through with the leather so very sort of mysterious and deep and interesting and unusual 
and it comes in the dark bottle colour rather than the light bottle colour in Jo Malone, so you know it's going to be a heavy one. The Bottega Veneta perfume is really leathery. Again, this has a mossiness to it, but it also has patchouli in, which none of the other ones in this fragrance um, in the list have in them. First time we've seen patchouli mixed with leather, and I, you know, I love patchouli. This makes it a little bit more daytime, normal fragrance, helps it last. So if you're looking for the kind of leather that you can wear to work or during the day and you want that leatheriness but you don't want it to be too much and too um, different, then this one is probably a nice safe leather bet. So that's it guys. I hope you found this list useful. Let me know if you like leather perfumes. I know they're not for everyone but they are quite cool, quite sexy and I like to maybe spray one from time to time. So let me know what you guys think. As always, links down below to where you can get these and do subscribe if you're not already. But that's it for now, guys. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.